Welcome to Mojo Plays, and today we are peeling back the layers of this massive game to look at 10 hidden secrets in Baldur's Gate 3. For this list, we are focusing on pieces of gameplay that players may have missed on their first, second, or even third playthrough. Let's roll these dice. Before we continue, we publish content all week long, so be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to get notified of our latest videos. Smart Ogre. Gentlemen, contain yourselves. This quarrel sells our feast. Besides, tastes like pork. The Blighted Village is known to hold many secrets and mysteries, but one of these mysteries may not have even struck the player as a mystery. In fantasy games, players can quite easily bring themselves to accept anything they see. If you start asking questions on why can this dog talk, you're going to cause yourself stress when it starts to fly as well. I've gone off track. Uh, oh yes, the Blighted Village. If you convince the goblins to let you pass peacefully, you will come across three hungry ogres. One of these ogres is extremely intelligent and even a little refined. Some players wouldn't have questioned this and accepted it as another quirk of fantasy. But if you convince him to fight you and you loot his body, you'll see that he is carrying a warped headband of intelligence, which grants the wearer a 17 intelligence score. That solves that mystery. Polyamory. And I do mean sex, to be clear. <laughs> We've been waiting long enough. You might roll your eyes at this entry if you've already been doing this, but it seems to be a common thread that many players haven't realized this fun detail about Baldur's Gate 3. You can run multiple romances at the same time. Traditionally and strictly by the game's rules, you can only pursue one partner at a time. In the beginning stages of romance, you can switch partners, but you will permanently lose whoever you are ditching. The same Fallout 4. This doesn't mean you can't fully pursue multiple romance threads. Simply, and this may not be a shock to some of you, switch characters. If you've made a custom character, they can romance Gale, switch to control Astarian and get freaky with someone else. By switching characters, you can experience romance options to their endpoint on multiple partners. Shovel. So, you're Shovel's master now. Fine. I'm about to throw a bunch of directions at you, so grab a pen and paper and strap in. Surprise, surprise, go to the Blighted Village and head to the secret lab located under the apothecary's house. To do this, use the hidden switch in the cellar to get to the magic mirror. Before reaching the lab though, you will find several coffins. Make sure to check them all because one of them contains the scroll of summoning Quasit. This scroll allows you to summon the weirdest little guy known as Shovel, but don't worry about the weird name because you can change it to the much more easily digestible Fork. Shovel or Fork will accept you as its new master and is now your little dude. Careful, he's a bit of a prick. Feeling rag. Never summon Shovel. Never feed Shovel. Now call Shovel. Top floor. The arcane tower located in the Underdark is almost like a secret within a secret. The location itself is not particularly hard to discover. You will find it, but the lift to access this multi-leveled structure is not working. Once players realize they could place a glowing blue anti-magic bulb in the generator to reactivate the lift, they would find enough within the building to think they'd solved the mystery of the arcane tower. But there is one extra little secret that most players might have missed. On the top floor, the player will encounter a group of automatons, and by talking to them, you can acquire a special ring that generates light. If you happen to equip this ring immediately, a new feature would unlock in the elevator, revealing another floor in the arcane tower. Ride the elevator there to get the incredibly helpful quarter stuff. Never think you found everything. Stay open-minded. His arms are too tight and too low for a comfortable hug. Owlbear Cub. Hidden beyond Druid Grove in the Tieflings camp within the initial areas of Baldur's Gate 3 is the Owlbear Cave. Following the river leads the player to a cave, but be careful because there's an angry Owlbear mother hidden inside. If you manage to get inside and kill the Owlbear mother, its cub will flee the scene, get captured and held at a nearby camp. There are two ways to get the Owlbear Cub. You can either take part in a game challenge set out by the goblins, or you can purchase it for 500 gold, a pretty heavy price this early in the game. We suggest get good and complete the challenge. Phase Spider Matriarch. The Phase Spider Matriarch is a lovely little hidden encounter within Baldur's Gate 3. 
beating this big ugly biatch is equal parts difficult and rewarding, so we suggest rolling up those sleeves and getting her done. The boss is located in a mini dungeon at the bottom of the blighted village as well. Bet you didn't see that one coming. After taking on an annoying collection of minions, including more spiders, the party will encounter this teleporting spider boss, the Matriarch. The fight does lead to some awesome spider themed loot, so if you've ever wanted to dress head to toe in spider gear, jump down that well, loser. Rescue us. Friend, you found the helm. We remember you well. Us is the little intellect devourer players will have encountered in the tutorial area of the game. But don't forget this cutie, because us can be found again in the end area of Act 2. If the players get behind a destructible wall found deep in the Mind Flayer colony, they will find a morgue where us is trapped in a cage. Simply free the little guy and you'll get the item you need to summon them. How cool is that? Us has some fun quirks like appearing as a cat in populated areas and is a prime example of what kind of weird secrets can still be found in this wild game. Bad kitty sings wrong song must fix. Non-lethal rewards. This is a simple change to the game that yields massive returns for the player. By default, the settings in Baldur's Gate leaves all combat as lethal, meaning that the final hit will always be a killing strike. Don't get us wrong, this is an efficient way to move through this insanely expansive world, but it does lock the player out of loot and opportunities. Traders and merchants provide more gold and items if knocked unconscious, not killing particular people leaves them open for future interactions, and there are plenty of NPCs that will change their dialogue and even point players to hidden loot and items after a good ass whooping. Instant Massacre. You said it was under control. It isn't you I answer to, Gortash. Every action has an equal and opposite reaction. That was Newton or Plato or Elmo or someone. Most players towards the end of Act 2 who opted out of using Gale due to his extremely annoying Act 1 affliction will have missed out on an alternate ending to this second act. It would take a touch of time to go into how this process is completed, but in Act 1, Gale can gain an ability that allows them to self-destruct at will. This can be used at any moment in the game, but it will kill Gale and the entire party instantly. So like, don't. At the end of Act 2, however, at the bottom of the Mind Flayer colony, you'll find all three chosen of the Absolute and the source of their power, the Elder Brain. Gale, assuming he has the power, will offer to use his self-destruct ability and drop all the baddies and the goodies instantly. With a full ending and credits, this is considered an official conclusion to Baldur's Gate 3. It is an ending of sorts, though not the one destiny had in store for you. Boal. Don't look at me. I just got out of devil hell. I'm not going to fishy hell anytime soon. Let's finish up with a fun and weird entry. In the Underdark, players may have easily missed the area known as the Festering Cove. Its entrance is hidden and unmarked, but it holds an area that, for all intents and purposes, is just top to bottom jokes. You'll find a colony of fish that worship Boal, not to be confused with Baal. You can even talk to the evil deity, who turns out to just be a gnome who really likes murder. You'll get his trusty sickle of Boal and be sent on your way. This is a big Easter eggy mess and we loved every second of it. What is to be your first commandment, oh great god? Did you enjoy this video? Check out these other clips from Mojo Plays and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified of our latest videos. Yeah.